As we gather for worship to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I invite you to share with me in our call to worship. Dear friends in Christ, the night is over, the morning is here. Christ, Christ is, is risen, 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 risen as, as he, he said. said. Sadness has vanished, tears are no more. Death, Death has fled, fled. Life, life is victorious. victorious. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice, we, rejoice. we, we are, are glad, glad in it. it. Come assemble for the feast of life, the, the feast, feast of, of the, the kingdom, kingdom of God. God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Good morning and welcome to our Easter Sunday worship here at Linden Baptist Church. Today we'll tell again the story of our God and his saving work complete in Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection. Today we celebrate because certainly if Jesus is resurrected, then we who in baptism die a life like Christ will be resurrected in a resurrection like his. So let's celebrate God's absolute and complete love. This morning, we'll begin by singing Resurrection Hymn, See What a Morning. pray together. Our Father, the last words of Jesus from the cross in Mark's gospel are, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The lament of all those who suffer intolerable, imponderable burdens. But on this day, we celebrate the answer to Jesus' cry that you have not abandoned him, but you have raised him from the dead. And we celebrate in his resurrection your answer to our cry and our prayer, that you have not abandoned us, but that you have raised us to new life and to new hope. So on this day of resurrection, 
We praise you. We thank you. And we lay ourselves before you as your children, as disciples of Jesus Christ, seeking the help and the strength of the Holy Spirit to live as the new humanity in the new world that you are creating. In the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord, your Son, we pray. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is, Lo, in the grave he lay. What in the world is more final than death? It seems that uh, so many things in our life are out of control, but death is the thing that waits for all people. But we see in Christ's resurrection that our God who created nature as we know it is above and beyond it and that he can bring hope even in the face of what we see as um, certain death. So what in your life today do you need to turn over to God and experience anew the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Let's sing together, Lo, in the grave he lay. God the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead for our life and for our salvation. 
God raised Jesus from the dead, the first fruits of a new humanity. God raised Jesus from the dead so that we did not have to live the way we have been living. But we can live in the love and the grace. We can live in the light and the power of God's presence in our midst. But we know that we don't always live in the light of the resurrection. And so a time of confession is a time where we reorient our lives to what we have been called to in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I invite you to join with me in this time of confession. We know that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Let us in freedom confess the wrong we have done. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we confess that we come to this day of resurrection as imperfect people. Although we may have faith, we also carry doubts and apprehensions. Just as Jesus' disciples were unsure of his presence with them, we are unsure of your presence with us. We go out into a world of demands without the full confidence that you are our guide and our sustainer. And we are too often motivated by our own shortcomings and anxieties than by your grace and love. Forgive us and help us to see your Holy Spirit's work in all things. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who returned to his disciples despite their own faults, and we ask that you hear us as we continue our confession in silence. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has come also through a human being. For as in Adam all die, so all will be made alive in Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Our next hymn is Because He Lives. Did you hear in our call to confess? The scriptures tell us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. The love of God is why Jesus came, why he was willing to obediently go to the cross to die. And it's why his resurrection gives us such hope. What would even the resurrection of Jesus be? without the love of God for us, who he created. So let's sing together, because he lives knowing that every day we have God who loves us and supports us through this life.
Let us pray. Living God, today's good news is wondrous, so amazing and magnificent that we struggle to wrap our minds around it. Open our eyes to the scriptures that are read and preached. Remove the obstacles that block our minds. Shine your light so that it may take our darkness that is within us, that we may go, tell, be, and do according to your will and ways. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 118. We'll sing our response. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord indeed punished me sorely but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord, this has been done, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, 
unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. from the Gospel of Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back, as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be glory and honor and power and might, now and forever. Amen. The lectionary readings for Easter Sunday this year actually give us two options for the gospel lesson. Uh, The first option is the gospel passage from Mark. Uh, The second uh, is from John's gospel. They are very different accounts of the resurrection. 
In John's gospel, of course, you have the whole conversation and the encounter between Jesus and Mary. Uh, and you have Mary going and telling the disciples that she has seen the Lord. Mark's gospel ends in a very different way. His account of the resurrection is very much more stark and, and leaves a lot of questions and a lot of loose ends that, that we know were tied up, but at least at the end of the gospel, Mark leaves us wondering what is going to happen. Mark's gospel is filled with fear in the account of Jesus' resurrection. It is a story of failure. It is a story of failure of the disciples, including the women disciples, who had been faithful to stay with Jesus at the cross, but it was a, it was a story of the failure of the disciples to grasp and to understand what Jesus had been telling them all along. And that failure begins at the very account, beginning of the account. Mark, as all the Gospels tell us, that the, that, that the women had come to the tomb. And they had come to the tomb not in the expectation of seeing it empty. They had come to the tomb not in the hope and, and, and with the excitement that Jesus had said he would be crucified and raised from the dead. No, they came to the tomb with spices and with linen. They came to the tomb in order to anoint Jesus' body. In other words, they came to the tomb to give Jesus a proper burial that Joseph of Arimathea was not able to do in the, in the rush and the hurry in which Jesus was laid in the tomb uh, following his crucifixion. So they come to the tomb having failed, failed to grasp, failed to understand, failed to incorporate into their own lives the message that Jesus had been saying to them about what was going to happen in Jerusalem. And when they get to the tomb, of course, they're worried about whether the stone is going to be too heavy for them to roll away. And when they get there, they see that the stone has already been rolled away. So in a sense, their lack of planning for how to get into the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus, God had already taken care of in rolling the stone away and raising Jesus from the dead. And when they get there, they see a young man dressed in white sitting on the right side of the tomb. And the young man tells them that they don't need to be alarmed. Mark tells us that when the women saw the man sitting there, they were afraid or they were alarmed, as the New Revised Standard says. The, the text there in the Greek probably means that they were shocked, that, that they were absolutely astonished to see the stone had been rolled away. And, and the, the astonishment was ast an astonishment that edged on fear as they see this young man sitting there uh, in a white robe. One wonders why they would be afraid of a young man sitting there in a white robe unless, of course, they might have recognized this young man as someone who had perhaps fled from Jesus uh, in the garden uh, when Jesus was arrested. We don't know who this young man was, but, but they, 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 it struck a note of, of, of terror in a sense, in, in alarm and shock in them. And the young man says to them, don't be shocked. Don't be alarmed. Don't, don't, don't succumb to fear at this point because you are looking for Jesus. I, I know why you're here. You're, you're looking for Jesus. And, and Jesus is not here. Look, you, you, can, you can bend down and look into the grave and see that there is no body there. There, there is no Lord there. And so what you need to do, what you need to do is you need to go tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus is going ahead of you into Galilee. And he's going to meet you there. And he will talk to you and be with you. And notice the last phrase in verse 7. Just as he told you. 
Not just as I'm telling you right now, but just as he told you when he was alive before his crucifixion that he would be put to death on a cross and that God would raise him from the dead. He told you that. There's no need to be afraid. Trust. Trust in Jesus. Trust in what he has told you. In Mark's gospel, that at least in the oldest accounts of Mark's gospel, ends with these words. Not words of excitement, not words of joy, not words of happiness, not words of, of, of feeling like they had been reborn and renewed with a new purpose. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. You, you, you hear the, the mounting of these words about fear and terror that, that, that Mark uses to conclude this gospel? It says that, he says that they fled from the tomb. and The word there literally means they made their escape. It was like they found an opening and, and they found a chance. And they got out of there just as fast as they possibly could for terror. Not hope, not joy, terror had seized them. And the word there for amazement really means excess of fear. It, it, it is a word that means the displacement of the mind. In other words, they were terrorized and, and they were almost out of their mind with fear that had gripped them. It seized them, it had possessed them. The primary emotion they were feeling right now was not hope and joy, but it was terror. It had gripped the very depths of their being. And they said nothing. They didn't go and tell the disciples to meet Jesus in Galilee. They didn't go tell Peter to meet Jesus in Galilee. They said nothing to anyone. And Mark's gospel concludes with these words, for they were terrified at what they had seen. Alan Culpepper in his commentary on Mark's gospel says that the story of Mark's gospel, especially in the crucifixion and even the resurrection of Jesus Christ, is a story of the abject failure of all the disciples, every one of them. Those that didn't flee denied Jesus like Peter did. Even the women who had come to hang around with Jesus at a distance in Mark's gospel from the cross failed in the end. Alan Culpepper says the story of the gospel is truly a story about our failure, but God's faithfulness. It's almost as if Mark is wanting us to, to, to know that this is not our story. This is not a story of human heroism. This is not a story of, of human endurance. This is not a story of human courage in the face of, of death and darkness and difficulty. This is a story of God's grace and God's action and God's hope. God is the only one in this story who has been faithful. God is the only one in this story who did completely what God promised to do. The resurrection in Mark's gospel is an answer to the question that Jesus asked from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in raising Jesus from the dead, God affirms that God has not abandoned Jesus. That God has not left Jesus alone. It is God's resounding, powerful answer to the question that Jesus asked from the cross. I am here and death cannot defeat me. Death cannot overcome the life that I give. Mark wants us to understand that the resurrection is primarily God's affirmation of life over death. It is God's affirmation of the person and the work of Jesus Christ. 
It is, it is Mark's reminding us that our salvation, our new relationship with God, our new hope and our new possibility is God's work, not ours from beginning to end. Left to ourselves, we would be like Peter and James and John and Matthew, Levi. We, we would be like all the rest of them. We would run away. We, we would not even want to face the death that Jesus calls us to. Left to ourselves, uh, we would be like Mary and Mary Magdalene and Salome, who, came to the, who come to the tomb to bury Jesus, not to celebrate his resurrection, and leave awestruck and shaking at what they have seen at the hand of God. See, I think their fear wasn't so much that they didn't believe what the young man was saying to them. It's the kind of terror that overtakes us when we realize that we have seen the work of God in power. It's the kind of fear that melts all our presumption. It is the kind of fear that, 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 that destroys all our pretense. It is the kind of fear when we recognize that we have not trusted Mark wants us to know that our salvation is God's story, that God has not abandoned Jesus and God has not abandoned us either. In those moments when we are tempted like Jesus to cry out, my God, my God, why have you left me? Why do you not answer me? Why are you, have you forsaken me? The resurrection stands as a testimony that God has not abandoned us, that God has not left us but that God has acted in our lives and is acting in our lives to raise us from our death, from death, just as he raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Mark also includes the detail that most of the other gospels do, that Jesus tells the, the women to go and relate to the other disciples that Jesus is going to meet them in Galilee. Why, why not meet them in the temple? Why not meet them in the upper room? Why, why not meet them somewhere in Jerusalem? Why Galilee? Well, Galilee was the place that Jesus did most of his ministry. It was a place in Judah and in Judea where most of the poverty and the oppression was felt most strongly. It was in that place where Jesus called his disciples. It is in that place where Jesus fed the multitudes. It was, it was in Galilee where Jesus destroyed the boundary line between clean and unclean. And he, he destroyed the, 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 the barriers that we build up in the human community between Jew and Gentile, male and female, black and white, acceptable and unacceptable. It was the place where all of those activities and all of Jesus' teachings came together to announce the coming kingdom of God. Jesus calls his disciples not to Jerusalem, not to Pilate's place, not to the temple, not to the seat of power, but to go back to Galilee and to pick up the ministry that Jesus began there of proclaiming and enacting and living out the kingdom of God. And Mark, of course, in his gospel is not just speaking to the original disciples. He's reminding us that we too, we too have been called to go to Galilee. We too have been called to join the risen Christ in Galilee. Now, not the physical Galilee in Palestine, but the Galilee where the proclamation of the kingdom of God is good news to those who are hungry and those who are naked and those who are in prison, to those who are sick, to those who have been oppressed, to those who have been devalued, to those who have been left out, to those who have been pronounced unclean and unacceptable, to proclaim and enact the good news, to destroy the barriers, or as Paul says, to destroy the, the dividing walls that keep humanity divided. Alan Culpepper, in his commentary, writes this, The angelic commission, therefore, continues. 
It continues to be an invitation for every reader of the gospel. Go to Galilee. Continue the work of the kingdom that Jesus left unfinished. And there you will see him. He is not in the tomb. You will find him still among the suffering, the needy, the oppressed, and the estranged. With all who share their bread, give a cup of water, receive children, protect women, care for widows, and extend grace and hope for all. Go to Galilee, the messenger said. Go to those places, to the highways and the byways. Go to the places where people are desperately in need of life and grace. Go to Galilee, and there you will see the risen Christ. And of course, Mark's gospel ends not knowing not knowing whether the women ever fulfilled their commission, not knowing how the commission to go and get the disciples to go to Galilee was ever fulfilled, but we know that it was. It's almost as if Mark is leaving the gospel question open to you and to me. Are we going to go to Galilee? Are we going to go to the places where Jesus ministered to those who were the least and the lost? Are we going to go to those places where Jesus went seeking to save those who had been separated and those who had, whose lives had been destroyed? Are we going to go to Galilee amidst human suffering and human brokenness? Are we going to go to Galilee to join Jesus in his work? Mark seems to tell us if we want to see the risen Christ, if we want to truly be able to affirm in our lives and in our experience that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead to the glory of God the Father, then we need to go to Galilee. We need to go to those places where Jesus has called us. Those places and to those people the world would just as soon forget. And when we go to lift up a cup of cold water, when we go to clothe the hungry, clothe the naked and feed the hungry, when we go to, to visit those who are sick and in prison, to house the homeless, when, when we go to, to, to Galilee in order to welcome the stranger, there we will find Jesus. And there we will see and know that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Because in, in Galilee, we will see Jesus. Will you pray with me? Lord, we confess that sometimes we come to Easter Sunday and we sing the songs of resurrection and we sing the songs of joy and yet we have these doubts in the back of our minds about whether you really are alive, whether you really are present. Is resurrection even possible? Lord, we confess to you that perhaps the questions that we have about the reality of the resurrection and the power of the resurrection, even in our own lives, is because we have failed to join you in Galilee. That we have failed to respond to your call to us to be where you are. We confess that too much of the time we want to, to ask you to come to us. But on this Sunday, on this Sunday of the resurrection, on this Easter Sunday, may we hear again your call to us to come to you. And may we answer that call with the totality of our lives to join you where you are at work in this world so that we may know and see the power of your resurrection. This we pray in your name, O Christ. Amen. So let us on this Easter Sunday profess the faith of our baptism as we say together. We believe in the God of life, whose breath is in us 
and whose mercy encircles creation. We believe in Jesus Christ, who loved us indestructibly and who shared our pain. He is with us now, as he promised, even to the end of the age. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who welcomes us into the household of faith, gives us gifts in abundance, enlivens our hearts with joy, and urges us into the world to testify without fear to God's justice and grace. Hoping against hope for the promised realm of peace, we love one another while we live, we honor every creature God has made, we stand against the powers of sin and death, and bless the earth and all that fills it. Glory, thanks, and praise be yours, O loving God, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. In this time of meditation, will you ponder how you want to respond to the invitation, in fact, the call of Jesus Christ to join him in Galilee? And in this time of meditation, will you commit yourself anew to being about Christ's ministry in the Galilees of our world? Let's sing our communion hymn. Today, let us break bread together.
just as Jesus called his disciples to come and meet him in Galilee, so Jesus calls us and invites us to come to this table. Because in, at this table, we will find Jesus. At this table, we will experience anew and afresh the claim of Jesus on our lives. We will experience anew and afresh the grace of Jesus poured out for us. We will experience anew and afresh Jesus empowering us to be his disciples, to live as his people. At this table, we will be fed by the Spirit of God. So come to this table at the invitation of Jesus Christ and experience new life. May we pray together. Oh God, we thank you for this table. But we don't just thank you for the wood and for the cloth and the candles and, and for the bread and the wine, but we thank you for what this table represents, not only to us individually and as a church, but what it means to the world. That you have formed a new covenant in the midst of humanity, a new covenant not just designed for this group or that group, but a new, a new covenant that is open to all the world. It is a new covenant not of, of, of judgment, not of, not of command, but it is a, a new covenant of love. It is a new covenant of mercy and grace. It is a new covenant of sacrifice. And we thank you for that new covenant. We thank you for the life that comes to us through it. We thank you for the community of the church that we experience through it. And we thank you for the mission that we are on in this world through what this table proclaims. Your life, your death, your resurrection. And so seeking to be the people of God at this table we join together in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture tells us that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took bread. And after he had blessed this bread and given thanks for this bread, he broke it. And he said to his disciples, take and eat. For this is my body, which is given for you. And after they had eaten, Jesus took a cup and he said, This cup represents a new covenant that is written in my blood. And I want all of you to drink deeply from this cup. So as we share together in this bread and cup, Easter people, come now to the table with Christ. For he is risen, he lives, and presides at this feast. Come, eat together the bread of life. For he is risen, and nothing separates us from God's love. Come, drink together from the cup of gladness. For Christ is risen, Risen as he said, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Let's sing together the doxology. come to our time of intercession, time when we offer our prayers for the world. Would you bow with me? God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. We praise you for the power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love, love that is stronger than death. Send us out to tell the good news. Fill all creation with life, we see the evidence of new life as we look at our world. Bring your creation to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate in us the care of what you have created. Help us to lead by example as we care for your creation. Draw your people from every nation, every tribe together as we celebrate the hope of resurrection. Reveal through your people new possibilities and inspire us to seek out new beginnings that reflect your desire for your people to live as one body, joined in worship and service for the sharing of the gospel. In the hope of the resurrection, we pray for all in need those in need of hope, those living in fear, all facing physical illness, and those who grieve. Assure them of your promises. Fill them with your hope. Surround them with your people who offer a touch of your presence in tangible ways. Fill this congregation with joy. We are called your beloved through baptism. Multiply that joy so we can share it at home, at work, and in our community. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust as we join with others in saying, Your mercy is great, your mercy endures forever. We raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Amen. as we draw this time of Easter celebration to a close, we are called to celebrate the good news of God's deliverance, God's salvation to our world. So even though this moment of worship may come to an end, may we still keep our ears open to the voice of Christ and our eyes open to the presence of Christ, beckoning us into those places where the transformative love and power of God needs to be shown. As a reminder, each year, the Monday after Easter, our church office is closed. So we will, uh, the office will be closed uh, tomorrow. But other activities of the week will continue Tuesday afternoon. We will have our Bible study uh, on Ecclesiastes at 1.30. 
Uh, and then on Wednesday evening at 5.30 will be our fellowship meal by Zoom. And if you'd like to be a part of that, of course, contact us and we'll make sure you get an invite to that. Wednesday evening at 6.30 is our Wednesday evening prayer service. Uh, and that will be on Facebook and on YouTube at 6.30 p.m. On Thursday, Larice is doing a Bible study at 2.30. And uh, I believe she's still doing it on the cross. Is that right? Going to be looking at Pentecost. Starting, starting to look at Pentecost this coming Thursday. And so join her at 2.30. That will be on Facebook and on YouTube. And then, of course, on Sunday, we have Sunday school at 9.30 on Zoom and worship uh, at 10.45 on Facebook and on YouTube. We have one birthday to celebrate this week, uh, and we want to sing happy birthday to Dora. So let's sing happy birthday to Dora. Happy birthday. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And so may you follow the risen Christ into all the places that he calls you and leads you today and every day. Amen and amen. Well, as we conclude our worship today, we'll sing, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. joy as you love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.